Tonight. This is the work that we get and, and, and we're supposed to be okay with it. Broward County Schools in desperate need of repairs because bond money was promised, the fix never came. Inappropriate, absolutely. Tonight, CBS News Miami Investigations uncovers the school building gap. At the end of the day, this all comes down to money, how it's spent and where. As we showed you at five o'clock, it's happening all over the country. And at seven, we showed you some of the solutions. And now we want to take a closer look at what's happening here. Well, in the state of Florida, we found districts with fewer black or Hispanic students saw the most state funding on average, more than $150 per student. Those with more students of color tended to get less funding, as low as $97. Although two districts that had more minorities did see a slight rebound in funding. In Broward County, the disparity comes in how bond money, first approved by voters nearly a decade ago, was spent. CBS News Miami's Joe Gorcho investigates. Rain pours through covered walkways. Drainage pipes fail to funnel rushing water. We don't have the luxury of sitting back and, and, and believing that our school board is going to do what they need to do. A frustrated Blanche Ely High School parent shares her disappointment. The Tigers home is one of many Broward schools needing millions to fund repairs. Everything was a problem from the underfunding to start with. Dr. Natalie Lynch Walsh is the Broward Schools Facilities Task Force Chair. She gave us this May 2014 document detailing facility conditions and probable repair costs. Among those documents, photos show blistered roofs and drainage issues at Northeast High. At Pasadena Lakes, the problems include roofing and mechanical issues. Preliminary estimates projected more than $2.9 billion needed to make all the repairs in five years. However, the district only asked for and received $800 million in the voted upon SMART program in 2014. They already knew that they needed about $3 billion to do all of the deferred maintenance and all of the renovations and any school replacements. The 800 million was never enough to do the $800 million worth of work that the bond said it was doing. In part, mostly because the roofing estimates that formed the budgets were based on roof repairs instead of roof replacements. The cost cutting came at the expense of schools like Markham Elementary in Pompano Beach. Markham suffered the last five years with leaky roofs. A 2022 picture shows a tree protruding through the building, one now vacant and scheduled to be replaced entirely. Last week we visited and saw trees, grass and bushes growing on the roof, waiting for construction to begin. I wasn't for the bond 12 years ago because of one question and one question alone. What's your implementation plan? Markham Elementary resigns in Nora Rupert's district. She felt the original plan needed a priority list, oversight or strategy on how and when to address school repairs. And now we're fast forwarding nine years later. Were your fears realized? Yes. Every yes. single one of them. Every single one of them. And my district, the worst. Schools in it, like Margate Middle, still have restrooms that have not been renovated in decades. But the budget was not informed by uh, equity, which it's supposed to be because of this uh, 2000 lawsuit that was settled against the district. And what I mean by that is there are district ed specs, there are state requirements for educational facilities, um, that should be driving the space and what goes into the space. And at least at Markham, we just found that they were making the classrooms too small so that they could fit this budget. CBS News Miami conducted an independent study to examine the district's recent facility investment. Our findings show the district budgeting more dollars to spend fixing schools with a higher percentage of low-income kids. This second chart reveals the district spending far fewer district dollars on finished repair projects at those same schools. We always um, sometimes say Lauder Hill is the stepchild of Broward County. Robert Crum hopes to inspire change with something simple like a fresh coat of paint. Oftentimes we don't realize that the environment is something that really helps with a mental health or how the kids feel. Crum uses cheerful colors to brighten Broward Estates Elementary. He's a lifetime Lauder Hill resident who leads a local nonprofit, Only the Beginning. His mission, initiating projects to support underserved schools' basic needs. We have kids that have hardship at home, so 
having them to come to the school that's a world of art and world of life has them just really thinking about things on a higher level and on a more positive level. While visiting with Crum, I looked up at the covered walkways only to see exposed nails. Inappropriate, absolutely. After a grand jury report found mismanagement of the Smart Bomb program, Tori Alston landed on the Broward School Board last August. The report outlined project delays and cost increases. Kind of prior uh, priorities from the district uh, and the prior boards, uh, they have put resources uh, probably in areas that didn't need it. Crum points us to another school that does, Broward Estates neighbor Parkway Middle. Part of it looks like an abandoned property. One, we had molding buildings, and we had some other things that's going on at the um, Parkway Middle School. It received funding last school year for building replacement. I'm talking about decades, and it's finally starting to come to life, but it seems like we will still only get the new building um, 2028. I've worked in uh, the private sector. I've been around government. I've been a chief of staff at uh, the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, it doesn't take five years to build uh, a school. At Blanchelli, renovations to the gym took more than two years before reopening in 2022. One year later, we see paint peeling off the walls by the fans. Caution tape blocks access to the locker rooms, and there is damage to the walls and the walkway by the entry door. This is the work that we get, and, and, and we're supposed to be okay with it. Is it fair? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And we shouldn't have to continue to fight for something that our tax dollars pay for. Soon, CBS News Miami investigates why and how Broward Schools spent its bomb money and why some district leaders feel it became a funding battle between the east and west sides of the county. So this is so frustrating. What can parents who have kids at one of these underfunded schools do? When I was out in the community speaking with different parents from different schools and even district leaders, one thing they say, get involved okay. within your school. Reach out to your principal, email your district leader, talk to your district representative within your district and make phone calls, get to the board meetings. But when speaking with Dr. Peter Licata, the newly hired superintendent for Broward Schools, he was telling me in our conversation, which will be featured prominently in our next report, mm -hmm. to make sure that the district is the voice for those communities and those parents that cannot speak up for themselves so equity can be reached when it comes to this repair process. All right, Joe Gorcho, all about advocating for the students and for those families in those communities. Thank you. Good work. Thank you, Joe.